Here we go with the 26th Mailbag. It's Mailbag Monday. Brought to you today by Farmery Brewing's Pioneer Harvest Stout. This video is not sponsored by them, unfortunately. Getting a brewery sponsor would be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh well, whatever. Let's get into her. The first thing is expansion module. Five different ones, according to that. All for a grand total of 20 cents. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well first off... Oh, and there's that too, okay. First off, we have a wall wart. One wall wart power supply. It says it is 12 volts at one amp out. All right. Oh, we can check the 12 volts part anyway, fairly quickly. Let's just do that. Got a power bar over here, plug that in. Center positive, probably. I don't know, let's see. 12 volts, almost bang on. That's nice. Let's uh, see if it's got any Where's AC volts. Anything to ground, about 28 volts AC. 28 volts AC so it's not perfectly isolated it's probably a capacitive dropper I'm guessing I'm not gonna bother opening it right now that's not not what I'm doing today we'll have to just uh, try it out uh, I think I bought that for for using with an LED strip uh, so let's uh, check the listing all right, this comes from DIY Box. It is a EU US plug AC 100 to 240 volts DC uh, 9 volts, 12 volts, 5 amps, 1 amp, 2 amp power supply, etc. The one I bought was a 12 volt 1 amp, and I paid $2.63 for it. Not much to say about a power supply, is there? Nah, just the specs, which we already looked at. All right, next, what else is in the package here? This little module here. Which is, it says GY EDS 5115 or 5101. And... SCL SDA address okay and then A0 1 2 and 3 voltage and ground hmm let's go and look that guy up quickly and see what he is it is a 12-bit I2C powered 4 channel um, EDC analog to digital converter oh slick that's what those those uh, four pins uh, labeled were they A0 to A3 okay so what do we know about this one then it is a oh what's the package say does it have the, no, the package doesn't which one did I buy then huh doesn't really say I may have to zoom in on the chip okay um, so it has a 1015, ADS 1015, 12-bit precision, uh, 3300 samples over I2C can be configured as four single-ended input channels or two differential channels. Differential being kind of like balanced, I guess. Um, even includes a programmable gain amplifier to help boost up small signals. Okay. Uh, it can run between 2 and 5 volt logic. Oh, so you can use it on 3.3 or 5 volt logic. Okay. 
and a 12-bit converter. Dee -dee 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 -dee. What else to say about it? Not much else to say. Okay. That could come in handy, especially if I'm using an ESP8266, because they've only got one ADC, one analog input, uh, and they run at 3.3. So that would be handy there, or just for general purpose, goofing around. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Arduino has a 10-bit ADC, so this one gives us a bit more accuracy. If I made a mistake on that, I'll no doubt put a title up. The next thing, it's a cable, it says. It is a cable. It is an RF cable. Hmm. This was a long time ago. Okay, that is an F connector, which is your standard North American cable TV antenna connect or antenna connector. And this one, uh, what is it called? M MCX, I think. Uh, what I bought this for is I also ordered an awful long time ago one of those uh, uh, software defined radios, the cheap ones, the cheapest one I could find from China. And it still hasn't showed up yet. Um, I should check with those guys and see, uh, see how far beyond their promised shipping date it is. Anyway, I'll wait for that. But this I bought as an adapter to go on to my, uh, my antenna that I've got outside. Um, to use it for a couple of things, uh, just to have an antenna outside that I can receive down here in the basement. Uh, but also to work on, uh, on trying to tune my homemade dipole antenna a little bit. I did the math and then I did just some thumbnail rough, uh, work on a different one. And the rough one seems to work better than the calculated one, which confuses me a little bit. So when I get that SDR here, I'll, I'll play with this. But in the meantime, let's see what I paid for it. Wow. Back in November when I ordered this thing, holy hell. I mean, admittedly it's been sitting in my uh in my pile of mailbag stuff but still it took four months to get here uh so cost me a dollar 98 um and yeah coax assembly mcx male to f female um it's just an rf adapter let's check this one expansion board module quantity one and expansion board module quantity one There are two little expansion board modules. Let's look at the little guy first. Comes with some nice little yellow header pins. It is, it is, it is. Focus, please thank you. Uh, high voltage on one side, LV1234 ground. This is an eight channel or 8-bit level converter I've uh, I've had a different one of these come through earlier but this one can do eight at a time so this you'll use in between uh, something that uses 5 volt logic like an Arduino and something that uses 3.3 volt logic like in ESP8266 or any of the things that are designed to work on 3.3 volt logic with that well, don't need to spend too much time on this because we've seen something similar before. Yes, yes, yes. It is an 8-channel I2C. Why does it call it I2C? It isn't I2C. Well, I suppose you could run I2C through it. Um, but that's not normally what we do so for. Um, it is a logic level converter board. Bidirectional for Arduino. This guy from World Chips cost me a dollar twenty-five Canadian. All right, what else was in that package? Well, it looks kind of like an Arduino board or something. With header pins and stuff, and it is 
S O. And focus, it is an STM32 demo board. So it is a microcontroller board, but it's not based on the uh, Arduino uh, family of, well, Arduino isn't a family of chips either. On the uh, Atmel chips. It is an STM32F chip uh, with an 8 meg crystal on it. Hmm. So what do we got for pins on here? Uh, 5 volt, 5 volt PA, 14, 13, 10, 9, PB, PA. Okay. And 3 volt ground TX and RX data. Uh, 3.3. Ah! So it looks like this is a 3.3 volt logic chip. Which means that level shifter is going to come in real handy because most of the modules that I've got to interface with it are 5 volts. Hmm. The other thing that I want to find out is can I program this using the Arduino's uh, IDE? Huh. To the listing! Mini Development System Board ARM STM32 F030F4P6, whatever that means, Cortex M0 Core 32 bit 48 megahertz. Oh, how does it do 48 megahertz with only a 10 meg crystal on it? That's cute. Uh, what do we got down here? Dee, 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 dee. This board is a minimum system. Yada, 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 yada. Oh, up to 48 megahertz. Okay. And it creates a micro USB power supply interface and programming debugging interface. Okay. Not much more to say there. I'm going to have to do a bit more research. 16k bytes of flash. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Did he, did he, did he, okay, different ones in the line. Key features. Here we go. That's right. Between 16 and 256k bytes of flash and 4 to 32k bytes of SRAM. Uh, it's yeah, it runs on 3.3 volts. Um, you can run it between 4 and 32 meg oscillator. It is an internal 8 meg oscillator as well. Oh, it has as many as 55 IOs. This one doesn't have that many mapped out. It has built in real time clock, bunch of timers, 2 I2C. Six UARTs or USARTs, uh, two SPI, serial debug. Wow, it's a very powerful little chip. And all that for how much did I pay for that? Wow, well, here's a dollar ninety-seven. I'll have to see if I can make it work with the Arduino IDE. Or, uh, or have, do I have to learn another IDE? Spent a little bit of time doing investigation and it seems like these STM32 boards, there are a bunch of different variants of the chip architecture which all need different um, uh, hacks or whatever drivers and things for the Arduino IDE. I'm not going to spend much more time on that right this minute. I'll do, do its own video once we've done some research. But I did discover that this is just a power connection it's not a programming connection programming is over here but it comes preloaded with its very own blink sketch so at minimum i know it works connecting to it that's going to take some time okay what's next let's check this big bag out here just oil coolant pipes Oh, I think I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a completely different project. This... You've probably seen other guys do this. And I just decided to get around to it myself. Um, I've got this old Helping Hands, which 
everybody has pretty much one of, but it's not super healthy at the moment. So I thought I'd build my own using these lock line uh, type coolant pipes because you can position them anywhere. So I just bolt it down to something and put some clips in there using some method or other. I'll have to drill that out to get these ones in, but hang on, let me see what else I've got in stock for clips. Hmm, I've got these ones here, which are maybe a little bit small, but I could jam them down in there and epoxy them in place. Now that I have you know, 12 different types of epoxy, but I also have ordered some more clips, a couple of different sizes, uh, maybe some this size, maybe some some different size, and I can drill those out and epoxy them in. So there's another project coming along. Six pieces plastic, quarter inch or quarter round nozzle, I guess. Flexible water oil coolant pipe hose, 300 millimeters or 11.9 inches, if you speak that language. Cost me $4.53 for the six of them from a seller called XX-805. Oh, and he charged me buck and a quarter shipping. So that was really $4.53, $5.50, $5 5 or thereabouts. Close enough, anyway. Uh... Not much else to say other than the length of them. Uh, the thread is half inch thread. That's nice. That'll make it easier to mount knowing that. Um, and yeah, just shy of a foot long. Alrighty then. And I think the last thing today, it is module. Good old generic module. Oh, there's more than one. Oh, two of the same thing. No, they're different. And kits. It's kits. Oh, yay. Uh, which one should I look at first? This one, because it's pretty obvious what it is. Let's go in there first here. Dump the whole thing out. It's one of those. It's a little heart-shaped thing with chase lights around it. Of course, Valentine's Day is long gone. Um, but there will be another one coming. So this one... Let's zoom in here. It's not using the, uh, the 4017 or something to, or 555. It's using an LM358 to do its magic this one here specifically um, and a bunch of LEDs which judging by the dot on the bag are red LEDs so that guy's oscillating is there just two circuits here on the board that's there's of course no schematic No, it looks like there's only one circuit of LEDs, as far as I can tell. So that's just an oscillator going on and off, probably. Power switch, speed, transistor, bunch of LEDs, bunch of resistors. Hmm. Not that exciting, uh, a circuit, I guess. I'll see if I can find a schematic for it because they creatively didn't send one. But that's okay. These things are pretty easy to do anyway. Well, that should uh, keep me occupied for an afternoon and something for my daughter to use for uh, Valentine's Day at school next year. If I get it done before then. Okay, this one was so long ago when I ordered it that the listing doesn't exist anymore. But at the time, uh, back last year, just before New Year's, I paid $1.12 for this. According to my notes, it took 79 days to get here. And I bought it from Robot Home. The postmark on the package shows that they shipped it the day after I bought it. So it's not their fault. It's 
either uh, China Post or Canada Post or Canada Customs or somebody uh, whatever uh, doesn't matter I got it uh, I didn't get ripped off these days it's selling for 251 from the same seller and it is called DIY kit red heart shape breathing lamp electronic kit DC 4 to 6 volts for student decor decor decker lots of different people selling it is there any no there is oh wait oh wait there we go, there's all the all the bits and pieces. LM358, which is a op amp that drives it. There's what it looks like when it's finished. No, no schematic. Also in the same package was this other kit. Let's see if I can figure out what this one does before I go to the listing and just figure it out the lazy way. More LEDs. Three chips. Oh. Who do we have here? Zooming would be good. What are you? You are. Come in. There it is. T is a five five five. Okay, that's the uh Brains of the operation. Well, that's the, the the pulse, I guess. And 74HC595. That sounds familiar. And that's also 70HC595. I have a sneaking suspicion that that's a shift register. And we got uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A bunch of LEDs there. And then one separate one. What is that one separate one? That's white. Okay. So I wonder what these guys are and why that one is separate from them. Oh, I'll find out later. Ooh, a cheap old school potentiometer. The one that's in this other kit is uh, the newer style. This one looks like something that I might have taken out of a 1970s TV set. But hey, resistors are easy. Got two. Slide these guys up. Zoom out a little bit. Got two pushy buttons, a couple of capacitors, a handful of resistors, and the board. So, the LEDs go around the outside of the board. They are L1. Why are LEDs labeled L? They're not inductors. Uh, there's 16 of them. There isn't any in the middle. So, does that one actually belong with those ones? Maybe. Uh, we got two shift registers in the 555, the potentiometer, capacitors, two switches. Okay. Shift register, that's probably, if that's what those are, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, it's probably a different way of chasing 16 lights. And yeah, every, every one of the LEDs is coming off up pin on those guys where's the other one down there yeah that's why they're physically separated because each one is so the first one's probably doing the first half of the leds and the second one's probably doing the second half of the leds okay that should be fun i like chasing lights chase lights are fun let's see if my guess is correct when i look up the listing just like the other one, this one came, uh, was ordered last year and took 79 days to get here. It cost me $1.59 and the listing no longer exists. But if I look at another listing for the same thing from the same seller, these days it's going for $2.89. The same seller was, of course, Robot Home, because you could see that. DIY kit NE555 plus 74HC5956 16 bit 16 channel light water flowing lights LED module kit. Not sure why they call chasing lights water flowing. I'm guessing it's just a translation to and from Chinese issue. 
Yeah, that looks like all the parts that I've got. Um, yada, 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 yada. Oh, an actual schematic. There we go. So, 555 doing its 555 thing. Pin 3 is the output, which goes into the clock of both of those. Oh, into the S clock? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the two switches. Pull SR clear on that one. And SI on both of them. And DTD. Okay. I'll have to figure out how exactly, or what exactly those do. But yeah. That's what it's doing. Those are... Oh! Maybe you can uh, light up certain LEDs in the 8-bit pattern of each one. Uh, so this one, Q0 through Q7. Q7 goes there, which goes into SI there. Oh, shift in, maybe. Yeah, sure, why not? Probably is. And then here's the... Oh, that's Q7 Prime, I'm sorry. Um, my monitor is tiny. Hopefully yours is bigger. Um, so it looks like this guy ripples through, kicks a signal out there into the shift in here, and which ripples through these guys, and it's Q7 Prime goes out there and to the shift in there. Okay, and you can... Yeah, you can probably use the uh, buttons to preload a pattern in as it's going. Wow, that looks like it'd be cool. I haven't played with shift registers forever. Two pieces mini USB to dip adapter converter for 2.54 millimeter PCB board DIY power supply new. Okay, that's also from DIY Box. Two of them cost me a buck and a quarter with free shipping. I don't think there's much to say about it. No, there isn't. And the other one, 5, 10, 20 pieces micro USB. I got five of them for $1.25 from DIY Box. Uh, micro USB to dip adapter, 5 pin female connector PCB converter DIY kit. And there we are. There's today's mailbag haul. That was a pretty good variety. Um, the power supply, a couple of kits, uh, those uh, uh, connectors for my experiment with uh, with my assortment of cheap USB power cables, uh, RF adapter for future reference, the STM board, which should be interesting if I can get it if I can uh, get it going, which I should be able to. I mean, it's and for less than two bucks, wow, for a microprocessor board. Um, to go with that, I've got an 8-bit uh, level shifter, um, a 4-channel ADC that I can use. Actually, yeah, it runs on either 3 or 5 volts, so I could use it with that or with the Arduino. A um, couple of kits and this little project here to replace the tired old helping hands. That's great. Cheers. Talk to you later.